This is our moment. This is a small uh, picture of the creativity of this university. It's also a small picture of our uh, of our uh, dedication to sustainability, to the uh, to the ecology that we need to all be focused on, to the environment, and to issues that are enormously important. Um, we need to start at home. This is a start at home. And of course, as I told the folks a little bit earlier, what I'm equally proud of is the fact that Ohio State University will be there on the mall in Washington and an opportunity to show um, uh, without our usual Midwestern modesty that indeed we are one of the great universities in this country. Because we're not doing Prosarco anymore, I don't know how the question comes back because I don't know that they know how they're going to work through that. So we're talking about putting that and then the plywood, building the frame basically underneath so that it doesn't get wet? Or... Um, some of the decisions to orient the house and the different strategies we've used were the passive systems first. Um, later, you know, we, we talk about integration of active systems, but it was, the house is really designed around the passive systems. So passive, uh, for us, was really about allowing the house to accommodate the environment without technology, without the use of energy. Being aware of your environment and being able to ne negotiate between the environment um, starts with controlling natural ventilation and sunlight. So the east side of the house is treated differently than the west side of the house. Um, the south facade is treated with a, a trome wall so that you're filtering um, daylight into the occupiable spaces of the home. We've also tried to accommodate as much um, cross ventilation, so uh, windows on the west side that are low to allow the cool air to come in, but then they exit high, so the hot air will rise inside the space, but then we have windows on the west side um, that operate at the top of the window walls, so the air kind of blows through the house and pushes the hot air outside the house. So part of the passive strategies for the solar decathlon house, we have uh, vertical louvers on the east and west sides of the house. And what these really allow you to do is um, control the, the sunlight throughout the day. Um, so in the summer, in the afternoon, on, the, on this west side of the house, you could set these louvers up at 45 degrees, and that allows you to block the direct gain of the sun um, into the house, which really allows you to passively help keep it cool. Um, we wanted to keep a kind of consistent rhythm of solid to void. So for the windows, the, the louvers, we did the same thing, kind of a consistent two inch width um, that allows air to pass through, allows light to pass through, and it, kind of works with the, the aesthetic of the house, the verticality of the barn siding, and you can keep that consistent with the verticality of the louvers. Another element of the passive systems we have on the house um, is the south, south facade is what we call a trome wall or a heat mass wall. What we have essentially is two layers of this polycarbonate material, um, it's called thermogal, which allows you, with the internal cells and the polycarbonate material, allows you a higher R value than glass. So we're able to keep a vertical pattern, um, which keeps with the aesthetic of the house, um, the frosted material allows us to diffuse light without losing any visibility. So in the private spaces of, of inside that wall is a bedroom and a bathroom. Um, we're still able to get light in without having to shield it for privacy. Um, and inside the two layers we've sandwiched together, there are acrylic tubes that will house uh, water. So what happens is the water will heat up from the sun's energy throughout the day, and at night it radiates that heat inside the space. So it's a passive way to control 
temperature of a house. So a lot of the design decisions we made on Solar House One come from just the kind of general understanding of how space interacts with the environment and wanting the house to be as responsive to solar energy as, as much as possible. So a lot of the, the trome wall, um, the double layer of polygal and the acrylic tubes um, and louvers, evacuated tubes, solar panels, a lot of these decisions we made were really to get the house geared for living with the environment in a way that's sustainable and also passive. So I mean, we have technologies that take advantage of solar energy, but we also have the, the passive strategies which collect the energy without a lot of technology and are able to kind of embody that within the house in a way that humans can interact with their environment and respond to it. From having worked all summer um, and actually the last year and a half on this project, moving from the studio environment out in actually working with the materials and seeing all the systems come together, um, it changes the way that I think one would design and it really gives you a more cohesive uh, understanding of the things that you're drawing and the way that they get installed or the way that they, ac they actually go together. Um, from various pieces and details and even just installing the appliances, uh, coordinating with the mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems and the solar thermal, um, integrating the passive and active technologies has been not only a challenge, but I think an opportunity to really see this house from start to finish. Um, it, it's a unique and very rewarding experience for any of the students that have really been involved. And I don't know that this replaces any sort of classroom experience, but it definitely complements everything that we were taught in school and bringing it out here to actually make it happen. So realizing the 3D space from the 2D drawings and the, the concepts um, and design intent originally has been very rewarding.